Hello students, are you all waiting for the English class? I know you are all enjoying the lessons, Chandana Mahini lessons under Samveda program. For the first, today I want to appreciate you all. You know why? I have four reasons to appreciate you children. See nowadays you have changed your style of study. How? Number one, you are using WhatsApp for educational purpose, isn't it? Right now? And second point, Many of you have downloaded Diksha app and using e-learning materials, right now. And the third one, many of you have learned to attend online classes. And fourth one, you are calling your teachers again and again and asking, ma'am, when will the school reopen? This shows your interest towards education and also affection towards your school. Very good children. You are becoming self-dependent in your studies. It's a very good development, positive development. Keep it up, okay? Now, we shall move to the poetry section of the fourth unit. All of you look at your textbook children. In the unit number four, you will have one poem, which is that poem, the Song of India. Let's see about the poem, Song of India. Students, the poem Song of India is written by V. K. Gokak, Vinayaka Krishna Gokak. He was one of the famous poet in Kannada. The Song of India is in the form of a dialogue between the poet and our motherland, India. Students, in this poem, the poet wants to present glorious picture of the past and also wishes to praise India's natural beauty. He wonders what he should sing for his motherland. Dear students, the highlight of the poem is that what the response of the mother India what we get in this poem. Because here the poet wants to describe or present the positive aspects of our country. But mother India wants to concentrate on the negative factors. Here, the response of the Mother India is really a thought-provoking movement for all of us. We will have a wonderful message at the end of this poem. Students, now let's have short introduction with the poet V. K. Gokak, Vinayaka Krishna Gokak.
of a great writer and poet. Now, students, all of you open your text, the poem Song of India. Now, I am going to recite the poem. All of you listen to it and also look into your textbook. What song shall I sing of you, my mother? I asked. Shall I sing of the Himalayas with their snowborn peaks? Of the three seas that wash your palm? Shall I sing of your clear dawn with its pure gold streaks? Said the mother, imperturbable, calm. Sing of the beggar, leper, that swam my streets. Sing of the filth and the dirt that fall my silver retreats. What song shall I sing of you, my mother? I asked. Shall I sing of your rock temples, epics in stone, of your children that died to call you their own, their very own? Of the seers and prophets that hewed the straight path for the man that pilgrims alone? Said the mother in indignant words, that beat into my ears like gong, that flew about me a pitiful thing like great birds. Sing of the wrinkled face, indexing ignorance, sing of the helpless child born in a bleak, dark home. Nervous I yet would ask, deeming it my task, what song shall I sing of you, my mother, what song? Shall I sing of the dam and the lake of steel mills? the shipbuilding yard of the men that work hard to technologize to put you on the page of the atomic age. Said the mother, of this you may sing, but sing also of the strikes early and late of iron men that come in their wake of class war and its correlate. Querulous, I said, is there no song that I can sing of you, heart whole and alloyed? A song bathed in the stainless blue and vaporing in the white. At that, the mother rose, draped in blue sky, milk white oceans heaved round her. Their waves were the entrancing and enthroning light on which she sat and wrote Book of Morrow. Her forehead opened like earth's destiny, yielding the sun god, cancelling all sorrow. It was clear dawn. Like a nightmare fled the night and the sunbeam was as the hand that saves. Let us comprehend the poem. Children, look at the images. Look at the first picture. What is it? Can you guess? Yes. It's the image of the snow-capped Himalayan mountain peaks. It's just beautiful, no? It's not only beautiful, it also protects our country from enemies and it is the one of the major unique features of our country. Look at the second picture children. Here our country India is surrounded by the three oceans in the south which are these uh, oceans the Arabian Sea, the Bay of Bengal and the Indian Ocean. These two are the major are unique physical features, unique features of India. And the poet wants to describe the beauty of these two. And not only these two, again the poet wants to describe the beauty of clear dawn. You know the meaning of the word dawn children? Munjane, keli dira? Munjane, dawn means munjane. The opposite of dawn is dusk. Munjane, musanje. Okay? Here, the poet asked whether he should sing of the beauty of clear dawn with its pure gold streaks. Andre, Munjane, Surya na kiranagal hongira na bilta ratalva na ma bhumi mele aga na ma bhumi nastu bahar sundar vagi kantsate. So, avand the beauty na ili poet explain marbe ko describe marbe ko hogal be ko antheli ili ankulta idar. So, as a response to the question of the poet, the mother replies like this, children. Mother India tells him to sing of the beggars, lepers that swarm her streets and filth and dirt that fall in her silvan retreats. And also, look at the image children. Have you seen these images anywhere? 
have you visited the places uh, in karnataka badami aihole patatkallu so when you visit there you will see these type of carvings on the rocks okay here the poet asked the mother india what song could he sing for her whether he could sing of rock cut temples guhantara devalayagalu anta heltivalva yes rock cut temples here the poet is calling rock cut temples as epics in stone of her children that died to call her their own see here the poet is asking whether he could sing of rock cut temples epics in stone or of her children here her children refers to the people or the freedom fighters who sacrificed their their life for the sake of the country so regarding these two the poet is asking whether he could sing it and also the poet is asking again whether he could sing of the seers and prophets seers ant helidre illi kalagnanigalu anta andre munde aguvantaha vicharagalanna shatamanagala hindene shata shatamanagala hindene avaru bardittirtakkantadu avarna kalagnanigalu anta karitare illi seers ant heli and prophets prophets ant helidre pravadigalu ant heli so here the seers and prophets who have contributed their valuable lessons and experiences to the common people ಅಂದರೆ ಜನಸಾಮಾನ್ಯರಿಗೆ ಉಪಯೋಗ ಆಗುವ ರೀತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಅವರು ಒಂದು ಮೆಸೇಜನ್ನು ಕೊಟ್ಟಿರ್ತಾರೆ ಸೊಸೈಟಿಗೆ ಸೊ ಆ ಒಂದು ಮೆಸೇಜ್ಗಳ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ನಾನು ಬರಿಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಪೊಯೆಟ್ ಕೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ದ ಮದರ್ ರಿಪ್ಲೈಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಇಂಡಿಗ್ನೆಂಟ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ದ ಮದರ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಆಂಗ್ವಿಷ್ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದ ಪೊಯೆಟ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವೈ ಶಿ ಈಸ್ ಟೆಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಎ ಇಂಡಿಗ್ನೆಂಟ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಟು ಸಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ಮಿಸರಿ ಡ್ಯೂ ಟು ದರ್ ಇಗ್ನೋರೆನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟು ಸಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ಲೆಸ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ನಮ್ಮ ಸಮಾಜದಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ಒಂದು ಅನಾಥ ಮಕ್ಕಳು ಮತ್ತು ಅಜ್ಞಾನದಿಂದ ಬಳಲ್ತಾ ಇರ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಒಂದು ಸಮಾಜ ಏನಿದೆ ಅಂಥವ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ನೀವು ಯಾಕೆ ಬರೀಬಾರ್ದು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಮದರ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಪೊಯೆಟ್ಟನ್ನು ಮರುಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಅಗೈನ್ ದ ಪೊಯೆಟ್ ಆಸ್ಕ್ಡ್ ವೆದರ್ ಹಿ ಕುಡ್ ಸಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಡ್ಯಾಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಲೇಕ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೀಲ್ ಮಿಲ್ಸ್ ದ ಶಿಪ್ ಬಿಲ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಯಾರ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮೆನ್ ದಟ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಹಾರ್ಡ್ ಟು ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜೈಸ್ ಟು ಪುಟ್ ಯು ಆನ್ ದ ಪೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ದ atomic age here poet is seeming slightly to change the topic he has changed his topic from the natural beauty of india to the intellectual power of the men because these are all man made things that is dam steel mills ship building yards technology all these things here the poet tries to praise the efforts of the men here to this question the poet was answered by a wonderful vision here the mother india is giving a solution for the questions of the poet through a vision andre vision andre ondu munnota avur ondu kalpane sikthu ee ondu ella prashnegalanna kelalagi mother india ondu vision anna illi kodtare what is that vision a vision of a new bright future in the vision he saw the mother rise gloriously draped in blue sky the three milky white oceans moved with steady power their waves were entrancing and enthroning light on which she sat and wrote the book of maru she is giving solution for all the questions of the poet through the book which is that book the book of the maru she foresaw a new destiny a new bright future like the bright sun god here the sun seems to be a solution for all the problems how because the sun is the one who destroys the darkness with his powerful rays this new future wiped out the sorrow of her people and this new future will arrive as a clear dawn in this new future the sorrows and hardships of her people will flee like a nightmare this new future in the form of a sun ray will act like a hand that saves her people look at the images children the mother is holding her child she is protecting she is uh, giving a comfort a secured feeling for the baby mother india promised that he will secure her children in a protective way observe these picture children the first image is the image of night second one sun 
sun god, third one dawn. Here these three pictures represents something else. What is that? Here the night represents all sorrows of the people and sun god represents the helping hands that saves their life and clear dawn represents the bright future, calmness and good things. Okay children, now we shall move to the next segment that is new words. Here are some new words. The first word is class war. The meaning of the class war is conflict between the privileged and underprivileged. Andre one the vargagala sangarshanta elti valva. So ariti. So we can use the word in this way. We should put full stop to the class war and bring harmony in a society. The next word is swam, which means crowd. A swarm of ants moving busily. So, like this, you can use it. Usually, to express the group of uh, insects, we use this word. The next word is Silvan retreats. Silvan retreats, uh, which means a place of seclusion in uh, deep woods. The usage of the word will be like this the, they lived in a Silvan retreat. Here is the next word, children. Put on the page. Put on the page, which means to get recognition. The wonderful feat helped to put Himadas on the page globally. Andre Jagatika Matadali Hesarana Maduanta Dunta. Famous Ago Dunt Hilti Valva. So Ariti. Iron men refers to hard working people. Iron men are the backbone of the society, isn't it, children? Whole heart, which means complete. I wholeheartedly accept your ideas. Andre manas purtiyagi na nadan upkodi dini anta head bekaadre. So we use this word. Heaved, which means moved with power. He heaved the luggage onto his shoulder. Observe the picture, children. The man is taking the luggage with power, with energy. Querulous, which means complaining. Forgive me for sounding querulous. Students, as an Indian, we should feel proud about India's natural beauty, cultural heritage, ancient wisdom, glorious freedom movement, industrial development. But at the same time, we should aware of the negative factors also. Which are those negative factors, negative aspects that we are suffering today? You know, illiteracy is the biggest problem, illiteracy and environmental degradation, ignorance, unemployment and different uh, uh, types of exploitations over the people. So, these type of problems we are facing today, but we need a change. We need to give, give solution for all these problems. Okay. Now, let us see a video that gives us a solution how we should play our role in our society.
Okay, children. Now let us have a look at what we have learned so far. Okay, here are some questions, children. The first question: Identify the two speakers in the poem. What does the speaker want to sing about? Your answer should be like this: The two speakers in the poem are the poet V. K. Gokak and Mother India. And now the second question is for you, children. What, according to the poet, is the contribution of the seers and prophets? Seers and prophets have contributed their valuable lessons and experiences to the common people. Third question, children. What are epics? Why does the poet call the temples as epics on stone? Epics are derived from ancient oral. tradition narrating the deeds and adventures of heroic or legendary figures or the past history of a nation rock temples are specially designed with the carvations of sculptures of our epic stories each and every carvation explains the heroic deeds of our puranas so the poet calls the temples as epics on stones fourth question children what does the poet mean by of your children that die to call their own of your children refers to the freedom fighters who sacrificed their life for the sake of the country to get rid of the foreigners let's have a look at the summary of the poem children the song of india by vinayaka krishna gokak is in the form of a dialogue between the mother india and the poet The poet presents the glorious picture of the past of India and also presents India's natural beauty such as the snow-capped Himalayas the three seas the rock cut temples the dawn the lakes the shipbuilding yard and the steel mills but mother india tells him to sing a song of beggars lepers who swam the street She asks him to sing for millions of people who work hard to earn money. The poet gets annoyed and asks why he couldn't sing any song wholeheartedly in her praise. Mother India rises on hearing his words, looking beautiful, draped in a clear blue sky with milky white oceans moving around her. She writes the book of Maru in which she wants a glorious India. where people don't suffer where they were literate and not biased by caste and class systems she want india which is free from darkness of ignorance and which is full of the light of knowledge now let us have a look at the rhyming words children you will find these rhyming words in your text you you just look at your textbook here are some words the first word peaks the word peaks rhymes with streaks palm calm streets retreats stone own alone you will get three words for this words birds ask task yard hard page age late correlate waves saves light night maro saro these are the rhyming words you just point out this in your text next uh, thing is figure of speech you already learned what is figure of speech in the bridge course classes now in this uh, poem you just have a look at the second stanza there you will find the sentence of your rock cut temples epics in stone here the poet is calling rock cut temples as epics in stone here the figure of speech we find it is metaphor you know what is metaphor metaphor is a figure of speech in which a thing is regarded as a symbolic representation of something else here the carvations on the rock cut temples represented epics that's why the poet calling rock cut temples as epics in stone and one more uh, figure of speech you will find look at the sentence children said the mother in indignant words that beat into my ears like gong that flew about me a pitiful thing like great birds 
here the poet is comparing the words of mother with these two words that is like gong and like great birds and you know children what is simile simile is a figure of speech in in, th in which one thing is compared with the another thing of a different kind okay that that we call it as simile so in this poem ma the mainly you will find this figure of speech and we are moving to the last segment that is home assignment here are the questions children i am giving you four questions number 1 what is the picture of india you get in stanza 1 of the poem second question write in brief your vision of the future of india third question write the summary of the poem song of india fourth question what do the night the sun god and the clear dawn represent at last what is the message we get from this lesson children if we want to move in the progressive path we should not only look at the positive aspects of life we should also look at the negative factors or negative facts this will make us to move in a progressive path okay children i think you got the point thank you very much have a nice day